Hello, how are you? <laughs> We're about to bring in a new year. And I have some thoughts I want to share with you. A lot of people making New Year's resolutions. Well, we know that within a very short time, most of those resolutions are forgotten. So I want to share some thoughts with you, some thoughts that I feel that will allow you to keep your commitment to your commitment. I want you to like this page and share it. Like it and share it, okay? Like it and share it. <laughs> I tell you, this this is a time a lot of people are getting ready to to go to various events to party, to watch the Times Square event. Uh, many people go to church. I spend this time reflecting thinking about the past year, the things that I've done, things I wanted to do and I didn't do, mistakes I made, things that if I had them to do over again, I would do differently. And also, and this is a major part, I want you to like this page and share it, like it and share it. The behaviors, the choices, the habits, the relationships in 2018 that I will not take into 2019 if I'm serious about creating the next greatest version of myself. I want you to like this page and share it. Like it and share it, because I'm going to share some thoughts with you. Like it and share it, okay? Like it and share it. Because creating the next greatest version of yourself, really, is it's what it's all about. And it's something that we have to do on a continuous basis. That's why Paul said that the things I should do, I don't do, and the things I shouldn't do, I do that we have to be consciously conscious, moment to moment, in order to die to who we've been, to give birth to who we are to become. Does that make sense? Like this page and share it, like it and share it. And so I've got some thoughts. I know a thing or two because I've seen a thing or two. Come February 17th, I'll be starting off my 75th year on the planet. That's three-fourths of a century. Oh, my God. Oh, where did the time go? Where did the time go? It's, it's really been very interesting, reflecting on my life. And today, I'm going to come on several times to share some things with you, share some experiences, share some insights and some thoughts. I'm going to interview some people today. As we look into tomorrow, the beginning of a new beginning, look into tomorrow, the beginning of a new beginning. And I feel that what I have to share with you would be of value to you. Like this page and share it. I'm already having a hot flash thinking about it. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, oh boy like this page is sharing right now what do, what do I need to do to turn these words I'm looking at the words they're coming in sideways I don't know what that's all about let me see if I turn the phone if something different would happen I don't know I don't know okay wait a minute No, it did not happen. All right. Okay. All right. So at any rate, I want you to like this page and share it because I'm going to share some thoughts with you right now that would be a benefit to you, I feel. And things I feel that you already know, but sometimes we need to be reminded of what we already know. 
And I, I'm, going, I'm going to share some things with you right now. I want you to like this page and share it. Like it and share it. And if you can tell me how to make, uh, the, I'm looking at your comments sideways. I would read them, but they're sideways. How do I straighten this out? Seem like I'm usually having some challenge. Hey, Justin, how are you? He said, Jess, the phone is sideways. Okay, I got that. I can say, oh, the, oh, I see. What you're saying is, I've got to do this. Okay, let me see. He said, the phone is sideways. Justin, thank you. That makes sense. Thank you, Kareem. Oh, got my back up in here, up in here. How is that? Okay. I got some thoughts I want to share with you today. Like this page and share it. Like it and share it. Kareem, Ellis, and Justin, boy, powerful speakers. You hear me? Bishop Walker, how are you, sir? It's great to see you. Okay. I got something for y'all today. I've been thinking about this. Yes, indeed. And I want to share some thoughts with you. I want you to like this page and share it. And it, it's, um, am I doing it right now? I guess so. Yes, okay. Very good. I want you to like it and share it. Like it and share it. Okay? Now, the... The, the, the points and points that I want to make in this time. Let me kind of lower this here a little bit. Okay, I think that's that's a little bit better. That's that that takes it away from covering my face. I don't like my face to be covered up. This is a nice face. Some people might say it's a face that only a mother could love, but that's okay. My mama loved my face. <laughs> Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Come on, baby brows, baby boy. <laughs> okay. Uh, like it and share it. I think I'm, I've got the stand right. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Here we go. Here we go. We, we, we're getting. We're getting in the house right now. Get, I got to get closer to you. Yes, indeed. Like it and share it. Okay. Yes. I, you know what? I got I got a challenge here. I know. I'm looking for some things here. Good. I want to I want to I want to share with you some thoughts as you think about this coming year. This year that's right here, right here. I want to share with you so that, and I'm encouraging you to step out of line. I, I'm, I'm, I want to share with you, and this is, as, as Dwight Pleasure would say, what dropped in my spirit, how to make this your best year ever. Been thinking about that. And as I, as I spent time thinking about and, and reflecting, and I, I couldn't sleep last night well, couldn't sleep, woke up between two and three o'clock in the morning, and it's, it's been happening continuously this month. And I realized that it's a time of silence. It's a time to listen. It's a time to be still. It's a time for me to journal. It's a time for me to say, speak, Lord, thy servant heareth thee. And, and so I, I realized that this, 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 this restlessness, this time that I'm going through right now is a time for growth and development. And, and it's about going to that next level. It's, it's about looking at who have I been. I remember a young lady who had for a long time had been living a life that was not her. And she said, at this point, living this reckless life, living this life strung out on drugs, living this life, she went into the restroom and she looked in the mirror and she asked herself, who this be? Who this be? As she looked at the mirror, she was asking, who, who, who are you being? How are you showing up in life? And 
And so this is, this is a time for reflection. But it's not just here. It's something that I, I believe that we have to do on an ongoing basis. The, 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 there is a, a price. There's a price that one must make in order to have the life that you desire, in order to create the next greatest version of yourself. There, there's a sacrifice that's required. That most people don't talk about when you start t talking about New Year's resolutions. Yeah, that's that's everybody's doing that. What did Henry David Thoreau say? Do not go where the path may lead. Go where there is no path and leave a trail. So don't follow what everybody else is doing about what it takes to to make some things happen in your life. I want you to get out a pencil and paper. I want you to let some other people know about this conversation that I'm about to have with you. Uh, like this page and share it. Like it and share it. So a lot of people talk about New Year's resolutions, and that's that's cute. And the studies indicate that the majority, the overwhelming majority, within a few hours of the new year, they've already started off on the wrong track. Have, have you ever been driving and, and, and you were going one place and unconsciously you got off the expressway or you turned down a street that you always turned down because out of habit, out of habit. You know, Dr. Dennis Whaley said that people create habits and habits create futures. And so, so when you have a habit, it's a, as you look at this new year and you think about the years that you've poured into being the person that you are now, that just does not go away with a, a slogan, well, this is my new year's resolution. Oh, it's not that kind of party. No, it's serious. And we're living in some serious times. And, and this is a, a, an incredible time for you. And so I want you to like this page and share it. I want you to, to get some people that, that you can create as a team, seven people that are positive, seven people that have goals and dreams, seven people that you can work with, seven people that will hold you accountable for the things that you are going to talk about. I want you to make a list of, of things that you want to to do with your life on this coming tomorrow, tonight after midnight, when they have this big celebration in Times Square and places around the world. I, I, I don't go out on New Year's Eve. I, I stay in during this time to reflect and meditate, and journal, and light a candle, and, and pray to God. I, I want you to write this down. That, Four places I'm going to speak from. I want you to write this down. Number one, look back. Look back over this year and thank God. Look back and thank God. You know, I have a friend of mine named Michael Ponte, and, and he said that his father, who he admired very much, his father who had had his, his, his knee crushed his, and was facing amputation, his father who, who lost his wife, his father who had cancer. When people ask him, he said, how are you doing? And, and he said, I'm still here. I'm still here. I, I want the first thing that, that I'm encouraging you to do is before we leave, 2018 is look back and thank God that you're still here. That, that's, you know, don't take that for granted. That's real. That's real. I, I've, I've lost a lot of friends. I, I call about some friends and say, hey, how, how's William doing? Oh, he's gone. Say what? I didn't know. The fact that you're still here. I believe every day is a good day. You don't believe it? Try missing one. <laughs> oh, behave. He's getting warmed up now. You got that right. Oh, yes. Yeah, Dr. Anthony Sweeting would say, we're going to get the butter from the duck today. This is no infomercial. This is information for your transformation. And so as you look back, I want you to make a list 
of the things that you are thankful for. I know you've gone through some stuff. I know some of you are so glad and relieved that, that 2018 is something that's behind you. Yes, glad, can't wait. I understand that. But there's some, some good stuff happened too. In the midst of the drama, in the midst of the chaos, in the midst of the pain, in the midst of the disappointments, in the midst of the setbacks, in the midst of the failures, in the midst of the failed relationships, there's some good things that happen. Don't, 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 don't miss sight on that. No. No. Think about it. You're still here. You're still here. That means that, that, that you are still here because of God's grace and mercy. You're still here because there's something for you to do. <coughs> and that's the way I feel. I'm still here. I, I've gone through some stuff, all kind of stuff. In my business, all kind of stuff. In my finances, all kind of stuff. With my family, all kind of stuff. With my friends, with myself, with this thing called life. And guess what? I got some good things to, to look at and say, thank you, Lord. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm not going to let the good things that I've experienced be overshadowed by the negative things that took place. See, there's one thing about negative things. They, they seem to amplify themselves. They seem to be stronger and more prominent in our minds. So take the time. Force yourself because you got something to be thankful for. Don't, don't lie to yourself. Trust me on this. There are things that you are thankful for. When you're sitting at a, a, a light that changed and a voice said, don't move, you felt it, don't move. And boom, a light changed and somebody ran the light. And had you moved, you wouldn't be listening to me right now. Oh, you got something to be thankful for. When you listen to that first mind that said, don't do that, that first mind that said, no, 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 this, this, this is not going to be a good thing for you. And you listen and you reap the benefits of that choice. What are you thankful for? Make a gratitude. As people talk about what they want out of 2019, you be thankful for and look at and give thanks for what you got out of 2018. I was thinking about that this morning and I had... I had tears of gratitude. Took me a moment. I started thinking about it. And I'm so thankful. So many things. I'm thankful for you. I'm thankful that I still have a voice. I'm thankful that I can still speak. I can, I'm thankful that I'm, I'm not in pain now. I'm thankful that... I can still change lives. I'm thankful that I'm still useful. I'm thankful, as mama used to say, I'm in my right mind. I, I think I am. <laughs> you know, there are people close to me might not agree, but as far as I'm concerned, I think I'm in my right mind. Can you feel a brother up in here? Up in here. <laughs> Everybody might not agree, but I agree. <laughs> I might be crazy, but I don't know it. <laughs> Reminded me of a friend, and, and during the middle of the recession, she had some immigrants working for her, and they had just come here from Mexico, and 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 a, in a very short time, they were able to to move out of her house, and 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 and, and they were able to buy a home, and pretty soon they they had their own business. And, and they were doing very well, and she helped to facilitate bringing some of her family, their family members here. And so her friends asked, how could they be doing so good in the middle of the recession? She said, they don't speak much English, and they don't watch the news, so they don't know. They say America is a land of opportunity, and that's the lens from which they look at this place, and that's how they're operating. <laughs> 
What do you see? Remember Flip Wilson? What you see is what you get. <laughs> so, so I want you to think about what are you thankful for? Be serious about that. Don't gloss over it. Be serious. Dig deep and ask, what am I thankful for? Because you got some things to be thankful for. Okay? Look back. Next thing is, look around. Look back, thank God, look around, and praise God. Because as we get ready to go into this new year, there are all kinds of possibilities that you can take advantage of. You know, people say, opportunity knocks on every door. No. No, I don't, I don't buy that. I believe opportunity stands by silently waiting for us to recognize it. Hello? I started thinking it this morning, just getting still, because many times when you get so caught up in this thing called life, when you get so caught up in generating money and paying bills, when you get so caught up in the drama and various relationships and, and things with your children and family members and friends, you just get disconnected from yourself. That's why the majority of people, as Darren Benzie would say, live a misplaced life. A misplaced life. They have the ability, they have the talent to do so much more. That's why the book of life said the road to life is straight and narrow and few, few, few there be that find it. Why? Why is it that few there be that find it? Because few there be that are focused. Few there be that are intentional. Few that are be that, that there be that, that see the purpose for their lives and living from that place, a purpose-driven life. That most people get caught up in the distractions of life. They pay more attention to their distractions rather than to their possibilities. And they're everywhere. This is a time for thinkers, people that are creative, people that are relentless, people that are looking at life with new eyes. Expand your vision for what's possible for you to decide that you, your, your circumstances are not going to define you. Make a decision that's great as he that's in you, that he that's in the world. Make a decision. This is a pivot point. This is a deciding moment that you've had it living life as you've been living and you want more because you deserve it. You deserve it. Look around and praise God, because whatever you've done is on the tip of the iceberg what's possible for you. Yes. Yes. Look back. Thank God. Look around and praise God for all the possibilities, all the things that that's looking at you, waiting for you to take advantage of. Next thing is, look ahead. Look ahead. What do you want? What do you see for yourself? Look ahead and listen to God. Look ahead. What do you see for you? Look beyond your circumstances. Expand your vision. Become clear about what it is that you want personally. What is it that you want for your family? What is it you want for your health? What, what plan of action do you have for being here? I'm going to the gym today. And I'm going just to walk around, to look around. Why, Les? I don't know if I would go if I told myself I'm going to work out. <laughs> Honest, okay, so I'm going to look around, okay, and just look and watch people, and pretty soon being in the environment, I'm going to do something, <laughs> okay, I'm just, I'm just telling you my method, my process, look around at your environment, 
Does it feed you? Does it fuel you? Does it motivate you? Does it inspire you? Or does it drain you? Does it deplete you? Is it compromising your power, your circumstances? Very important. Look around. Your relationships. Look around. Do, do they help you to become a greater person, a better person, more disciplined, more spiritual? Look around. Do they enhance you financially? Look around. Are, are, are these relationships that pour into you or take away from you? Look around. Because there's some relationships, some mindset, some behavior, some vision, some choices, some habits that no longer serve you and they don't need to go into your future. Look around. Praise God for the insight. Praise God for the courage to let go or be dragged. Be honest with yourself. Kyle outside said that truth crushed the earth shall rise again. Winston Churchill said the truth is incontrovertible. Malice may attack it. Ignorance may deride it. But at the end, there it is. The book of life said, yeah, yeah, ye shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Look around. And look it in the mirror. As Michael Jackson would say, the man or woman in the mirror. And ask the questions. As you look into 2019, what radical change must that person who's looking back at you make? Because at the end of the day, you don't get in life what you want. You get in life what you are. Look in the mirror and take personal inventory of yourself and be honest with yourself. There's some things we know. See, there's a public life. We have a public life. We have a private life. And we have a secret life. And most people know our public life. Okay? And some people we allow into our private life. But there's a secret life. There's a book I remember reading called Why well, I'm Afraid to Tell You Who I Am Because You Might Not Like Me. And yeah, that's all I've got. That secret life. Only you and God know that. And so, what is it in you that you know it's out of alignment? It's, it's not really you. And you know you need to take some corrective action to be on the path, to be in pursuit, to creating the next greatest version of yourself. Okay. Look back. Thank God. Look around. Praise God. Look ahead. Obey God. What part of you right now must die that you must kill off, that you now must become an assassin? What part of you right now that you must say, I'm not going to do this anymore. My friend Dwight Pleasure was smoking crack cocaine for several years and, and he was with some of his drug friends and he, he took a hit and he said, I'm done. And they thought he was done for the night. He said, I'm done. He called his sister. And they talked, and he, he hit the floor shortly after the conversation and screamed out, God, help me, help me, God, help me. He asked God to remove that, that urge for crack cocaine from his system. His family sent him 
a plane ticket to come home and he was at the airport and waiting for his wife, Sadie. And he had been gone for several years from himself and from the city. And she came around the corner in the old car. He said she should have done a drive by, given the fact that he deserted her and their two kids, given the fact that they lost their car and lost their home and everything they'd accumulated together because he gave himself over to drugs. And, and instead of doing a drive-by, he got in the car and, and leaned over and they kissed each other as, as if he had been away for the weekend. <laughs> you know, they talk about the power of forgiveness. Forgiveness is not forgetting. Forgiveness is remembering without anger. Sadie, what a woman. God blessed him with, and she never brought it up. He's so thankful. He realized that God was calling him from that life of drugs, from that life of reckless living, from that life of being unproductive, from that misplaced life, because that's not who he was. And I think about my own life, and I think about Dwight. Long period of time that I was insane. Long period of time that I look back and ask, what state of mind were you in when you were living like that? A long period of time that I was not the man that I am now, the father that I am now. A long period of time that I had a limited vision of myself. A long period of time that I did not stop to think and to reflect and take corrective action as I am now long period of time that I was not living from the truth that I was better than that. Look ahead. What is it that God is calling you to do? What's in your heart? What's in your heart? Because where your heart is there, your treasure is also. What's in your heart? Heart. What's in your heart? That's a calling. You were created on purpose, with a purpose, for a purpose. You're still here. You're still here regardless of what you've gone through. You're still here regardless of what you've done. You're still here regardless of what people say about you. You're still here, regardless of your failures and disappointments and your shortcomings and all the things that you've done that you shouldn't have done. You are still here for a purpose, for God's purpose. I said to myself, you know, Lord, hey, my song by Frank Sinatra used to be, I, I did it my way. I, I realize, in fact, I'm still here because of your grace and mercy. I have a chance to do it your way. Do it your way. And you do too. What's in your heart? And don't worry about how you're going to do it. How you're going to do it is none of your business. You can't figure that out. You're in that place where Einstein said, the thinking that has brought me this far has created some problems that this thinking can't solve. You're in that place where you have to embrace, lean not unto thine own understanding. There's some things that you know in your heart that the mind can't understand because we've been conditioned, we've been programmed. You've got greatness in you, but we've been programmed to think small. You can't 
fit a big life and a small mind. You got you've got greatness in you. Katie in Lessons in Truth said, man's primary cause of suffering is forgetfulness, forgetfulness. We have forgotten who we are. Dr. Carter G. Woodson said, if you can determine what a man shall think, you never have to concern yourself with what he will do. If you can make a man feel inferior, you never have to compel him to seek an inferior status, for he will seek it himself. And if you can make a man feel justly an outcast, you never have to order him to go to the back door. He'll go without being told. And if there's no door, his very nature will demand one. When I look at the insanity on YouTube, the things that people say, and they put money and time and energy to create and release it so the world can see it. Wow. And I said, I'm not going to criticize that. That's not my role. My role is to produce and to create something that might have value for you. For those of you that can hear me, everybody can hear me. Only a few people hear me. I know that. This message is not for everybody. I want you to like this page and share it. Like it and share it with people of consciousness. Like it and share it with people that you know that they can get some value out of this. Like it and share it with people you know that can perhaps hear me. Like it and share it with somebody that you want this to be in their mind, in their heart, and in their spirit. Like it and share it so that we can begin to expand the vision for people to empower them and to enlighten them of who they really are. Yes. Look back. Thank God. Look around. Praise God. Look ahead. Obey God. Say, order my steps. Say, yes, Lord. Shekinah glory. Yes, Lord. Oh, they tear that up. I, I am going to be listening to that today, all day. Shekinah glory. Yes, Lord. Yes, through tears of gratitude. Yes, through tears of celebration. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes to my heart, to my spirit, to every cell in my body. Yes, through resistance. Yes, yes. Yes, to the person that I know in myself that I can be. And yes, to the person that I know that I must kill off. Yes, to the behaviors that, that I must embrace. And yes, to the changes that I know that I must make. Yes, to the relationships that I must release. Yes. Yes, I will. Yes. And look within. Look around. Look back. Look ahead and look within. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you that you see for yourself in 2019. All these things will be added unto you. The behavior changes that you are committed to making all those things that you envision, the new relationships, the dreams, the goals, the habits that you are overcoming, all these things, the, the health, the new adventures, the healing, all these things, even if they haven't happened for years of praying, all the unanswered prayers, all these things, those unanswered prayers included, 
will be added unto you because it's time. It's time. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All these things will be added unto you. All things work together for good for those who love God and are called according to his purpose. When I was at Cancer Centers of America, six weeks ago and they told me that I was fourth stage. The little C for a long period of time. What flashed in my mind, all things work together for good for those who love God. You got this. Greater is he that is in you. You got this. Therefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. You got this. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. You got this. Here's what I know. I can't see you. I don't know you. But here's what I know in my heart of hearts. If you're still here listening to me, that the only reason you're listening, what I'm saying is common sense, but not common practice. What I'm saying, it's in you, it's in your heart. You already know it. I'm just confirming and validating that which is already in you. What I'm saying, the reason you can hear it it's because 2019, the year of your dream, is the year for your greater work. Your greater work. These things ye shall do, and greater things shall ye do. You got this. You got this year and beyond. Why? Because you're a masterpiece. <laughs> because you're a piece of the master. Oh, behave. <laughs> As Mamie Brown would say, my mama would tell you, put that in your pipe and smoke it. guarantee you somebody's going to call you back and say thank you thank you for sharing Mrs. Baby Brown's baby boy with me thank you for blessing me with this message thank you look back and thank God write down a list of gratitudes things you're thankful for look around and praise God what are the possibilities that you're going to embrace for yourself look ahead and Obey God. Answer the calling on your life as a higher calling and say, yes, yes, Lord, yes. Look ahead. Obey God. Allow him to order your steps. And look within. Connect with God. Spend quiet time with God. Say, speak, Lord. Thy servant heareth thee. That's my story. You have something special. You have greatness in you. This year is going to be the greatest year you've ever had. You have something special. You have greatness in you. You're greater than your circumstances and anything that you've gone through or going through right now. You have greatness in you. This year you will snatch victory from the jaws of defeat. You have greatness in you. As you pursue your dreams, you will get the butter from the duck. 
as Dr. Anthony Sweeting would say, you have greatness in you, and when you're pursuing your greatness, you don't know what your limits are. So you act like you don't have any. Raise the bar on yourself. What's the big dream for 2019? Raise the bar. Most people fail in life not because they aim too high and miss. Most people fail in life because they did what I did for the majority of my life. Aim too low and hit. And most people don't aim at all. My goal is to live full and to die empty. My goal is to let God use all of me to do it his way. Yeah, to serve you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll be praying tonight and thanking God, burning a candle in silence and eating hot pepper on a fork and getting ready for 2019. Not taking any prisoners and I'm eating the wounded. <laughs> out of your mind. <clears throat> yeah, he said, let that mind be in you. In order for another mind to be in you, you got to be out of your mind. <laughs> That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> like, this, <laughs> like this page and share it. Like it and share it. Like it and share it. Would you do that? And, and make somebody's morning, make somebody's day, make somebody's year. Yeah, do that. I'm not through yet. I'm an assassin. I'm going to kill every mediocre demon in you. We're going to bring that greatness out. <laughs> this has been Mrs. Baby Brown's Baby Boy. It's been a plum pleasing pleasure as well as a privilege. God bless you. God bless your dream. God bless you. You're still here.